So um, by now, you have, I'm sure, heard me say many times that I don't like throwing anything out, and so I collect scraps. And today what I've decided is to organize them a little bit for this project, um, basically strips. I do have a few, some you know, kind of squarish in size that I'm going to start with, and then I've organized them a little bit by size. And so here it doesn't matter um, how scrappy they are, they don't have to match. Uh, I think the scrappier the better. And then the other thing that I like to do for this project is uh, I don't throw out any little bits of batting either. And what I do is, is as small as these are, I will join them with a zigzag stitch and make a bigger uh, piece of, of batting. I would not recommend this for a quilt anyway, but for these small projects this works really well and it's a good way to use up all those itty bitty bits of uh, batting that you have left over. Okay. So the first thing that I've done is, I've cut, you can make this any size you want, but I'm starting with eight inch squares. By the time I quilt them, they'll probably quilt down to about seven and a half inches. Um, so I've got all these squares already cut up. Okay. And basically what I'm gonna do, and I'll show you on the machine too, but um, if you have uh, insole bright, you can use one piece of insole bright with one piece of batting. Um, in many countries, like in mine, you cannot find insole bright, so in that case, is, uh, I recommend that you do what I do, and I'm using three pieces, three layers of batting. And basically, this is a quilt as you go method, where I will start with my square or the smaller piece right in the middle, about in the middle. And I'm going to do just straight line quilting, about a quarter of an inch apart. So I will um, just quilt this down and that will help me hold all the layers together. And then I'm going to keep adding pieces um, kind of log cabin style. So if we're starting with the smaller pieces, then I would like, for example, for the next one, I might go here. And it doesn't have to be exactly the same size, don't worry about that, because it will get um, covered over. But so if I start quilting here, I would quilt this piece like this, and then uh, right sides together, I would sew down a seam allowance here, and then open this up. And then this one I would quilt the same thing, about a fourth of an inch apart in that direction. And then just keep adding as I go along. You know, um, in the same way that you put a log cabin block together, and you just keep going around and around. And uh, you join the, you join this, you quilt it down. So you, you, you join the pieces, flip it over, and then quilt the piece down. I'll show you this on the machine too. Now, the reason why uh, I just do this on the three layers of the batting, and I don't have a backing on this yet, and I will show you one that I'm working on right now. The reason for this is because once you get finished, this is what it's going to start looking like, okay? But on the back, it looks pretty busy, and since you're going around so many times, it doesn't look very clean. So i rather just do this on the batting itself and then afterwards I will put the backing on. Okay, and here I will simply quilt in the ditch. Um, probably just do something kind of like a snail pad or something to hold. And I won't do it through all the seams, but just enough to hold uh, this onto the backing. And you can either bind this with uh, uh, binding, or you can simply cut your your backing a little bit bigger, which is what I'm going to do, and to use a self-binding method like this to finish the piece. Okay, so now I'll move to the machine and show you how I start putting this together. Okay, so I'm ready to start on this piece. And so I've uh, centered my squarish piece. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to quilt this down. 
I'm going to um, sew it down in lines about a quarter of an inch apart now. Um, you can use a walking foot if you're working, especially if you're working on a domestic sewing machine. Or a, if you're a perfectionist and you really care about that uh, quarter of an inch, then you might use that quarter of an inch foot too. Uh, I'm working on an industrial sewing machine, so I really don't need that feet. I'm going to eyeball the, the distance between the quarter inch lines. So the first thing is just to secure the centerpiece. I always like to bring up my bottom thread, it's just a habit. It doesn't really matter on this piece because you're not going to see it, but I just have a habit of always bringing up my bobbin thread. Okay, so I'll just secure this piece. If you have an automatic thread cutter, then you can cut it. Know the way your machine works. If not, this is the way I do it. I just turn it so about four or five stitches, depending on the length of my stitch. Turn it again. And then just sew those lines. Okay, so I've got my center secured. And now I'm going to attach the next piece. Kind of. It's about the same size. Um, right sides together and just a narrow seam allowance. Turn it around, open it up. I'm going to move my needle over a little bit. And here I quilted the lines like this and this next piece they will be quilted in the opposite direction. So if you've ever uh, put together a log cabin block, you know that we kind of go around in a circle. So we would be going around in this direction. So the next piece, 
would attach here. And if it isn't exactly the same length, don't worry about it. It's, um, you'll be covering the edges up anyway. So just try to get it as close as possible, but don't give it too much thought. I mean, you can cover as much as you need to as you go along. ties together, then open up, move the needle over a little bit, and keep pumping. But I don't worry too much about the distance between the lines. I try to make it a quarter of an inch, but sometimes it's a little bit more, a little bit less. I don't really worry about it. Okay, so then the next piece would be going here. Uh, the other thing is that you don't need to worry really too much about the width of your strips. They can be narrow, they can be wide, whatever you like. So I'll keep on in this way, going around until I cover the whole surface. And then um, we'll come back and discuss how to finish this. Okay, so I finished the pot holder and I simply used the same backing fabric to bind the edges of the quilt. And as you can see in the quilting, basically what I've done is started kind of in the center and just gone around. It's kind of a snail design and just gone around so that I've got a cleaner finish there. And then if you like, you can end with a loop. Uh, some people don't uh, necessarily hang their pot holders, so this is optional. But this is uh, the way to make a really quick uh, pot holder using your leftover strips and uh, just to practice some line quilting if you like. I hope this has been uh, useful to you, and I thank you for watching.